This is Masuric Kral Death Priest, and this is why my friends hate him. Do these sound like the actions of a man who had all he could eat? So yes, this is Masuric Kral Death Priest. He's a black, green, and three for a 2-2 flying legendary insect shaman. Whenever a player sacrifices another permanent, put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control. Now, Masuric came out in uh, Commander 2015, and I kept trying to think of what to do with him, and it honestly took quite a while. Now, this this deck came out before Tergrid. One of the reasons for that is that uh, when playing something like Tergrid, people get really mad when you make them sacrifice their stuff, but they're more than happy to watch you bin your own cards all day until it looks like you're getting out of control, of course. When Throne of Eldrain came out and introduced the concept of food. Now, food, being a artifact that you pay to tap and sack to gain three life. And Throne of Eldrain has something like 25 cards to do this. Uh, of those, from Throne of Eldrain, I'm using 16. Uh, they're, they're up on the screen here. I'm not going to try to explain them all. I'm trying to keep the video to under 10 minutes. But each one of these cards either makes or interacts with food in an interesting way that helps Masuric do things. And to be completely honest, I'm kind of glad I drug my feet on putting this one out because since then, uh, we want Guillaume Masterchef from uh, one of the Strixhaven commander decks, and then four more cards from Modern Horizons 2, which just went into my deck when I played it last night, that also help make food and add for stuff to do. Uh, the Academy manufacturer there, he, he doesn't make food on his own, but if you make a clue, a food, or a treasure, you get one of each. And if there's one thing this deck needs, it's it needs the ability to stretch resources as far as possible. And then one of the side hustles in this deck is that once your creatures have come into play, given you food, and you don't really need them anymore, you can sacrifice them to perilous forays to go dig through your deck for a land with a basic land type, and that distinction is really important, and put that land into play, tapped. Well, if you're doing that, okay, blood gassed, whenever a creature, a land comes into play, you can bring him back into play from your graveyard, and then feed him again to perilous forays and wash, rinse, repeat. Once Field of the Dead's conditions are met, uh, a land comes into play, you get a zombie, which you can then feed to perilous forays and wash, rinse, repeat. Golgari Germination gives you a sapperling every time a non-token creature viewer dies, which then you can then feed to perilous forays and wash, rinse, repeat. And you leave Nested Shambor alone for a little while, he'll pile up a few counters, thanks to Masuric. And when you sacrifice him to, oh, I don't know, Perilous Forays, you'll get a whole bunch of Squirrel Tokens. And very quickly, with like that one card, you can pull a whole bunch of land out of your deck to help speed things up. Uh, Elvish Reclaimer, on the other hand, he costs one green, you pay to tap him, sack a land, and go through your deck for a land and put it into play. So, I don't know, Field of the Dead maybe or Gingerbread Cabin, or Witch's Cottage, or any of the other non-basic land I've got in this deck. There's basically a way to tutor for land, and then keep the sacrifice stuff going, so I keep getting counters and all my other stuff. And if I'm busy sacrificing creatures, I might as well have Smothering Abomination in play, which lets me draw a card whenever I sacrifice a creature. Uh, Crizota Guild Mage lets you sacrifice a creature to gain its power in 1-1 one -one Sapperlings, so once things have had a chance to build up, you wind up with a whole bunch of little dudes in play. And then, you know, Birthing Pods, so you can slowly upcycle some of your cards that just aren't doing as much for you anymore as they possibly could. So you've thrown a bunch of counters on some of your creatures, but they're just not really doing what you want them to. Well, you can feed it to Jarad Golgari Lichlord, which when you sacrifice a creature to it, uh, each opponent loses life equal to the sacrificed creature's power. So you can do a fair bit of a like, one-shot hit with this guy, especially once you've had a chance to pile things up. Of course, yeah, and you can always use Crizota Guild Mage to turn the guy into Sapperlings. And then, of course, once you've got a pile of Sapperlings, you then feed their little green brethren into something else in the deck. That way the survivors get even stronger. And as long as you can keep producing newer tokens, the older ones you've got just should keep getting bigger and bigger and continue to be more and more of a problem for your opponents. And as for all those real creatures you sacrificed, we would like to get them back, right? We're playing Black Green, which is two of the easiest uh, colors to get things back. We've got uh, 
three of my favorite black cards for bringing things back again. Eternal Witness is a creature you can chunk off later on, but bring something back. Golgari Fine Broker brings you back a permanent, which is a little limiting, but there's not a whole lot of instants and sorceries in the deck to start with. Uh, Witch's Cottage, provided you have enough swamps in play, will put a creature back on top of your deck, kind of the way Volrath Stronghold does. And Journey to Eternity, which should be absolutely no problem to make flip over into Aztal Cave of Eternity, makes things a lot easier by just putting stuff from your graveyard straight back into play. Now, so, we're making tokens, obviously. Uh, food are tokens, sap brings are tokens, all these things make tokens. So you kind of have to run something like Parallel Lives and Doubling Season just to get even more mileage of all the stuff you're already getting. Uh, it's it's a really, really nice to sacrifice a big creature to Witch's Oven, and instead of getting two food, you get four food. You can do a lot more with... F well, you can do a lot more with everything than you could with less of it, right? That said, as far as like the plus one, plus one counters go, no, I'm not running Hardened Scales, Corpse Jack Menace, Winding Constrictor, or a bunch of other those. Uh, the deck literally filled itself up so fast that... Corpse Jack's Menace was in there for a while, and I I wound up discarding it a lot more often than anything else. I've, I might find a way to to sneak in Hardened Scales, just because it, it works regardless of what happens. But, but like I said, the deck just got so big so fast, I had to make some, some rather unfortunate choices. And while, yes, I am running Bake into a Pie as removal, I don't really seem to have the room for Eat to Extinction or Feed the Swarm, which I realize is, you know, it goes a long way to keeping the gag rolling. I'm also not running Cauldron Familiar or Wolf's Quarry. Uh, Cauldron Familiar just doesn't do it for me. Yes, yes, I know. The cat can come back as long as you leave food on the table for it. But I've, there's just other things I could chomp away. And then Wolf's Quarry just personally seems to cost way more than it should for what you get out of it. But you know, that's just me. That's a deck building choice, right? I'm, uh, I'm personally kind of happy that uh, now that Wizards went with a mechanic like food... They've been making more cards like it, which should help me keep adding cards and changing cards to decks so it won't get stale. I understand there's a lot of puns in this. The deck is entirely based around a gag. Give me a break. <laughs> That's it. If you got any uh, suggestions I might have missed or any comments to make, the, the comment section's right down there below. And I will see you in the future with another commander later on.